the week of weeks. Thursday in Holy Week. The Garden. In his life and ministry, Jesus would habitually withdraw from the public gaze to be alone with God. He withdrew to speak to his father in prayer. Sometimes he also invited his disciples to join him in retreat. Come away by yourselves to a quiet place and rest a while. As Mark puts it, in the sixth chapter of his Gospel. In the city of Jerusalem, Jesus continued his habit of a lifetime. He would retreat to the home of friends in the evening and to retreat to a garden, the Garden of Gethsemane, on the slopes of the Mount of Olives, across the Kidron Valley, from the city of Jerusalem and its great citadel. On the Thursday of Holy Week, after sharing Passover with his friends, in the upper room, Jesus made his way to the garden, the Garden of Gethsemane. In the past, The garden was a place of refreshment and renewal. But this night, this time, it was to be a garden of agony. The three Gospel writers, Matthew, Mark and Luke, identify a number of stepping stones, as it were, which Jesus trod in the dark and sombre shadows of the Garden of Gethsemane. First of all, they recall Jesus' isolation. They note that he deliberately separated himself from the main body of disciples. Mark tells us, and he took with him Peter James and John, and began to be greatly distressed and in trouble. We find that in Mark chapter 14 and verse 33. He asked these three to remain and watch with him, but they slept. Jesus was very much alone. And there was fear in the garden. All alone, Jesus was afraid of the ordeal he was about to face. And so he prayed that if it were possible, he would be spared the terrible ordeal that awaited him. That the hour of the cross, the hour of his death might pass that the cup of God's wrath, the picture of God's righteous anger against human rebellion and sin might somehow be removed, if it were possible. Jesus was alone and in terror in the garden. There was also weakness in the solitude of the garden. Strength, it seemed, drained from Jesus, so much so that Luke records, and there appeared to him an angel from heaven to to strengthen him. We find that in Luke chapter 22 and verse 43. Reinforcement came from above, from heaven. And yet in the same chapter, Luke adds, and being in agony, Jesus prayed more earnestly and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling on the ground. We know from the gospel accounts that the night 
was cold. A fire was lit to warm people in the courtyard as Jesus was tried by the Jewish religious authorities. And yet, Jesus sweated. How come? The inner agony of soul found expression in sweat, even on a cold night. In spite of all the aloneness, the terror, the torment, the weakness and anguish of that night in the garden, Jesus accepted his destiny. He chose the cross. In the end, he resolved, not my will, but yours be done. We read that in Luke chapter 22 and verse 42. He would obey his father's will. And all history hinged on Jesus' acceptance, his submission to God's eternal plan of salvation. And the centre of that was the cross of Jesus Christ. Lastly, we witness the compassion as a stepping stone in the garden. When he eventually arose from prayer, Jesus found his friends sleeping. They were overwhelmed by sorrow. Sleep on now and take your rest for now. Matthew adds in the 26th chapter of his gospel, verse 45. There's no trace of irony or irritation in these words of Jesus. No, they are compassionate words. Jesus knew what was in store for him. He also knew what was in store for them, his disciples. And his heart went out to them in compassion and consideration. In closing, we have come to call this agonising night Monday Thursday. The word Monday comes from the Latin mandatum, which means command. Two commands mark Monday Thursday. First, Jesus commanded his disciples after he, their master, washed their feet as an act of humble service. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. Second, Jesus obeyed his Father's command to become sin and a sin-bearer for each one of us. It was an act of selfless love. We cannot truly enter what Jesus faced in the garden, what Jesus did on that fateful Thursday evening is unique. This is a night to marvel at what Jesus faced and embraced for us. To be amazed at the uniqueness of his sacrificial love and to echo the words of St. Paul when he said, The Son of God who loved me and gave his life for me.